but we need your resource packet. So please get out your resource page packet. The 932 resource page should have a table on it that is empty currently. I did, however, want to go back and make and make sure that we were all happy with how we finished yesterday. So what we were talking about, and what I, what I want to make sure we kind of wrapped on, is the coefficient to the x squared is really there because of what? That negative 16. Why is that there? Gravity. Now, the thing we didn't go back and formalize, but I wanted to, at least I don't think we formalized, is gravity. If somebody asked you what is gravity, because I don't want people to be confused, the force of gravity, it's my smart board is dumb, that's what happened. The force of gravity <laughs> is either 9.8 meters per second per second, which normally people just say per second squared, or 32 feet per second squared. So those are normally the two ways we talk about gravity. And I think then that yesterday I did talk about, that's why if you see 4.9, that's talking in meters. Now where this really matters is you have to make sure that your values then agree. If we are building the quadratic, you would want to make sure that your data is presented in either meters or feet and we're using the right factor for that. Right? Just don't mix up the 9.8 and the 32. That's what I've seen in the past that I wanted to touch on of 9.8 is your meters. And meters are big, right? That's why we have the decimal in 9.8 versus 32 isn't the perfect, but it's the rounded what gravity essentially is. And don't ask me what it exactly is because I'm not sure. Yeah. So would the A value always be like 9.7? Most of the time when we're like dealing with motion that involves gravity, yes. Now, it gets a little hairy when like, if you're talking about a plane or something else that like its motion has continuous force pushing in a direction versus when we launched the water balloon, it got its force once and then is just being impacted by gravity, right? Like a plane is continuously applying force fighting against it. So that'd be a much more complicated thing for us to graph. And it would not then look like a parabola if the plane was functioning correctly because it would not come back down at least, you know, very quickly. So today, because we've talked about how those functions grow and or don't, we are going to compare functions. I have two different ways that we can work through this. Either I can pick you guys randomly to make bets on a function. Like if I pick Athena first, she would pick function A through F and then nobody else would be able to pick it. Or I can just let you guys write down a prediction first really quickly. Um, actually, let's do that. I want you to predict the top three finishers of this race. What is our race? Our race is seeing how quickly will those functions approach infinity. Yes. So again, those functions, like when x is 1, or x is 10, or x is 100, or like which function will grow the fastest, which will get towards infinity, like get closest to infinity, the quickest. Mm -hmm. Even like, you like top three or like worst, worst, worst mm, Up to you. So write down some kind of prediction. I don't care exactly what prediction you write down. You can predict which one will be the winner, the biggest, like quickest to grow. You could write down observations about well, no. <laughs> we will in a minute, but you can't right now. Right now we're just writing down predictions. So in your resource packet, you have all these functions listed, and then you have a table that we're going to fill in together. So once you write your predictions, go ahead and start calculating. What about when x is 1, when x is 10, when x is 100?
This is why I dislike this also. My research brief looks all gross and pixelated. So I would like you guys to be able to fill in this table when we come back together. So take a few minutes. Now, there is <clears throat> uh, hundreds of thousands up here. There is an easier way to do this in your calculator as opposed to type in each thing individually for every input. Does not involve actually graphing. Oh, can we just double check that Tanya was right? Mm. Something like that. So if we don't know that, we will go over that here in a minute. Oh. <laughs> in the function, somebody just graphed a bunch of just like. One value function together. Um, like five. They could graph like five, seven, eight. Well, you got three. I have a feeling it was seventh graders that did not know what they were doing. No, wait, are you actually looking at the graph? Yes, and be careful with F that you type it in correctly. I would put the 2 to the X in parentheses, then minus 1,000. everyone typed their graphs into the Y equals. If you have not, please do so. Oh, the song's stuck in my head. Sorry, the reason I sometimes don't have my dot camera loaded up is when it's on, it slows down everything my computer does. It's my bad, but it takes a minute to load. It's still quicker than dial-up internet used to be. So you should have, now once my screen goes dark, it'll be a little easier to see. You should have all of these functions in your respective like y equals, like your y1, y2, y3. What I was saying about be careful with f is if I just type in 2 caret x minus 100, hopefully the calculator does the 2 caret x first and then does the minus 100. But if I want to be sure, I can put the 2 to the x in parentheses to make sure that that minus, sorry, I keep saying 100, to make sure that minus 1,000 doesn't happen in the exponent, right? Because I just want x in the exponent. Now, here's the part that I don't know if you know yet. Hit second window. Even if you don't have all these in here, hit second window. Anyone remember how to turn my brightness down in here? Isn't it like alpha... Oh, uh, yeah, I just can't hold it. I was trying to hold it. Huh. There we go. All right, so if we do second window, that brings us to this menu that says table setup. The only time you want both of those selectable options to be on auto is when you want it to run data for you. Auto will start it inputting. Please don't do this. Please just watch right now. The delta table will tell you how much the table changes by and what it starts at. So if I make delta table 2 and table start 0, when I go to second graph, 
to go to the table. Now X's are all filled in. I don't want that here. What we want is ask. The reason we want ask is it will then ask us for the values of X. Like what about when X is one or when X is 10 or when X is 100? So a much easier way to get six answers at the same time is to type all your functions in and function A when X is one is 100. Function B when X is one, 1.05. Function C, function D, function E, function F. So we are going to fill in our table on your resource paper for the values of X is one, X is 10, and X is 100. Uh, sorry, back here, independent is your, your X. Dependent is going to spit out your Y. So, yeah, okay, sorry, I breezed through this too quickly. On this menu, okay, second table set, if I have it ask, if I flip these, and I have it ask, watch what it does. Instead, it asks me for the Y, so if I make my Y, when is this a thousand? Like, this is goofy. It wants the output. It wants to ask the output and the input be automatic. Like, that doesn't really make sense. We want ask and then auto. We want the output to come up automatically when we type in the input that we want. And then these don't matter. These two options at the top don't matter when I set this on auto or ask and then auto. So second graph to go to the table. I'm changing these to 1, 10, and 100. And then I'm writing down all of these values. You know what that means. It means times 10 to the, it's scientific notation. E is the calculated way of doing scientific notation. Ooh, these ones are almost tied right here. Whatever input you decide you want to try next, you can try. So, guys, if I followed the CPM, like do this, then do that, then do that, we would have all talked about the values when x is just one. Excuse me, then I would have asked you to make a bet. Go back and revisit your initial gut reaction to which one's going to get biggest the fastest. And then look at x equals 10. We would then revisit. So of course, when x equals one, well, these are pretty big, right? They're both at like a thousand. But then when x equals 10, I have a thousand and these are still pretty big, but they're they're really close to each other. This is when stuff gets like, wait a minute. 
10,000, 10,000, way more than 10,000. Um, okay. Why? What do you mean, Leon? Give me more. So, two to the power of x starts with just two, right? Just two to the power of one. So over here, two to the power of x is two. Whereas here, two to the power of x is two to the 10th, which actually we can see here, well, if this is 24, it's 1,024. So we went from 2 to 1,024. And then we said, oh, yeah, double that 90 more times. There is a story of... I should just kick you out when you have a negative attitude. Maybe it would fix your negative attitude. <clears throat> There's a story. No, that was a coincidence. I was just saying that's a story. Oh, so that wasn't in reaction to me? Yeah. Okay, that much appreciated. Yeah, that was a totally true story. There is a story that I'm sure I'm going to tell wrong, but about a um, like a, a jester and a king. And the jester had spent years serving the kingdom, and the king very much liked him. And he was going to allow this jester to retire, essentially. And the king said, okay, like, I will give you one, like, whatever you want, within reason, I'll give it to you. So he's like, you know, what do you want? You want to marry my daughter? You want to, like, whatever? And the jester, already having a family, and, like, you know, of course, he's not going to marry the daughter. He's already got a family. He's an older guy. He says, all I want is a piece of rice. A what? A piece of rice on the first space of the chessboard. Because, you know, chess has been around for a very long time. A piece of rice. Yes. On the next space, I want double that amount. On the next space, I want double that amount. And the king was like, that's it? You just want some rice? Yeah, I need to feed my family. That's what I want. And the king thinks he's stupid. Right? He's like, whatever, sure, give it to him. He says, you know what? I'll not even start you with one. I'll start you with two pieces of rice on Ooh, the first face. So if we think about a chessboard, and on this piece, there are two pieces of rice. The question is, how many would there be on the final? How big is the chessboard? I don't know. Okay, okay. No. So then the king... So, let's build this function. What's our initial value? Two. two. What happens to two when it moves a space? It's doubled, right? He said, I want double. So, two times two to the, like, S power, right? For, like, the amount of spaces. How many more spaces are there to get to here? 63 oh. more, right? We already used space one. So this would be, this space would be two times two to the 63rd power. And then each of those before would be two times two to the 62nd. Two. How many pieces of rice are on this piece? Uh, What's your answer? Oh, it, it has an E. What is it? Thank you. 3.7 times 10 to the 21st power. So on that final chessboard piece, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, we got different numbers. Whoa, Liang, how did you get that? 
Yeah. I get 1.84. Yeah. 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 What? Times e to the 19. I think you maybe did for the 64th power. Did you do two times two to the 64? Oh, I did two times two. Ah, <laughs> two times two. So this, sorry, should be. But then you have to add all the <laughs> other spaces. Oh. And that's the total amount that I still, I do continue to add. So that's so yeah. That's yeah. so that's Dude, level. he's going to be set for life. Yeah. Rice is a lot of work. So guys, this number comes out to be one, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Can you imagine? And then you have to add all the other times. Can you imagine the peasants and the servants who have to add up all the? They have to count the right one by one by half. Hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions, quintillions. 18 quintillion grains of rice. Now, if, if the king backs out and he's like, whoa, 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 let's go back to deal one. You get one piece on the first tile. Well, that just changes our function to one times two to the 63rd, right? Oh, don't worry. That just drops off a zero. What is the difference? Literally, 9.2. Times 10 to the 18. It, this is actually, instead of 18, this would just essentially be 9. And it, it essentially cuts it in half, but not perfectly. Hmm. Yeah, still. Ridiculous amount of mess. This is the power of exponential functions. So what you're then talking about is the summation of the whole function, which is where we use this symbol, if you haven't seen it before, that is the Greek symbol sigma meaning sum everything. So you'd use that. You know, but the thing is that if you were like with a stupid king, can't you like pawn him even more? Just like, actually, on the first tile, can I just buy? Yeah, but you don't need, like, you really don't need that. You can sell it all for money. Dude, you're, you're sitting like, on like a pile of rice the size of your house, essentially. We're talking about like 18 points. You don't need more rice. Add more you money. don't need more. Yeah, like, you have, calm down. You have enough rice. rice. You can feed the rice. All right, so <laughs> at what point, at what point does this then not spit out a value? Can we find an X where our calculator literally is just like, ah, I don't know. Yeah. So go back into your table, play with some X values. What if you put in a super big number with a super big number? Now, hey, here's, here's a trick. Hold up. Go back to your Y equals. Turn off every other graph. So then you can see the y6. If you turn off all your other graphs, you can then see just the y6s next to the x. Oh, no, I got arrows. Arrows. Oh, no. On what? What'd you do? A thousand? Error overflow. Yeah, a thousand overflow. So wait, can we do 110? We can do 120. 130, 140, 150, 160. I got 400. About 250. 300. 300. 400. Oh, 400's too many. So at some point, this essentially gets so close to infinity. Because, guys, 2.1 times 10 to the 93. Third, we have 93 zeros after the number, well, okay, 92 zeros after that number. That's ridiculous. That's a number bigger than we can even realize. That is the power. Ha, ha, like what you did there. The power of exponential functions. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Yes, you did. You've been in my class long enough. My dad jokes are rubbing off. Okay, so at, hold up. If you said 332 is the limit, at 332, go back into your y equals, turn everything back on. If you said 332 is the limit, let's figure out what the rankings are. 
Go back to your table then. I didn't kill them. Don't, guys, this is why we're doing this. When you go back in to turn it off, do not delete it. Go on the equals and hit enter to turn it off. So if you deleted your functions, that's not turning them off, that's deleting them. Turn them back on, you highlight it black, turn it off. So if I want to turn them all off, I just do that. But then if I want to go back and turn them all on, I just do that. So now, now you can cheat and use mine if you want. Ah, no! Crap. Now it's going to try to graph all six of these and it's going to take forever. That's not how they calculate it. Just like hit. Oh, well, nope. Nope. Oh, clear works. Okay. 332. So at 332. Yeah. Stop being bad. Stop saying that. At 332, this is 33,200. Um, 115,000,735. 5.5 times 10 to the 13. Dude, get off the rice. <laughs> what the hell am I doing? That was actually funny. I said get off of it, and you said, but I had a mic. That was actually kind of funny. 8.7 times 10 to the 99th. Or you can just do 3 and see the math is going to be the same. So if we want to go and give them their ranks, obviously f of x takes first place. Oh, I missed that one. Who takes second place? Um, the c of x. Oh, yeah, the other exponential. Who takes the next place? Um, B of X. Yeah, B. So what type of function is that? It's quadratic, right? X squared. It's a, qu it's a parabolic, but it's a quadratic. Like, guys, just to make sure I've said this out loud, parabolic is the type of function, but we often call it quadratic. Quadratic really means set is equal to zero. And that's how we solve a quadratic or do the quadratic. It is setting it equal to zero. Uh, fourth, the other quadratic, right? So, so we've got exponential, exponential, parabolic, parabolic, fifth place, oh, linear, and linear. So when we talk about growth, exponentials have the fastest type of growth. Then parabolic situations, and then linear. Now, in there, between exponential and parabolic, is all those other, like x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, right? But the issue I see people making, not so much you guys, but this is not an exponential function. This is to be an exponential. It's not just does it have an exponent. It's that the variable is the exponent. So please be careful when people talk about exponential functions. That's not exponential. That's parabolic. Or I mean, you could say, like, you could name it a few different things, but it's not exponential. This is. Anytime you have x or some form of x, like even like x minus office. 1 or something like that, that's still exponential. Please come to the remote office. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Because it's exponential I agree. So, rice, rice to pork. Compare these. They're all very, very similar. Right? They use 2 and x and minus 1. So, what we're going to do now, create a table. We're going to use the auto on the independent now. So, go ahead and delete all your other y equals. Delete all your y equals and replace them with these three functions. Go into y equals. Should be where you are. Actually, 
Um, if that ceiling tile over there was still new, like missing, and over the summer they had some ceiling tiles missing, there's a pipe that comes in from the roof, like just a drain pipe that kicks sideways oh, and then flows down. When it rains really hard and the, the roof collects water, it just sounds like a waterfall. Like it's like really relaxing. I was here over the summer and it was just like, oh, you really relaxed. Yeah, it's Wait, relaxing. What did you do over the summer? Well, I was here for summer school. But oh, well, you were here. I know, but no, no I mean, like other teachers. They go on vacation. Yeah, they, they don't normally don't come to school. Okay, well. Uh, depends. You can choose to spread your pay out to 12 months, or you can just get paid for the time. Oh, wow. Do we, put we get paid for nine months of the year. Well, really, like 20 months, I think. But I spread mine out for 12 months, so I don't think it hit me soon. Then, go second table set, or second window. Set your table to start at negative two. And I will show you all of this on the dot camera in a minute, but I want you to try on your own. Set your delta table to 0. 0.5. It's the, the second option, like triangle TBL. That's delta table. That's that's change in table. Right, so that symbol delta table is change in table. So you want this to start at negative 2. Yeah, negative 2. Go by 0. 0.5. Be on auto auto. Wait, be on auto auto. Yes, switch it to auto auto. Be Trust me. Your y equals should have just these three functions. Oh, I will go back. Oh, it works pretty well though. Then when you hit second graph to get to your table, <laughs> it's done for you. Oh, they black in my way. This saves us an awful lot of effort. Instead of me typing in negative 2, enter, negative 1.5, enter, negative 1, enter, negative 0.5. If I know the interval that I want to investigate, let the calculator do it for you. And then, even though we just need to go to 3, if we go down, it keeps going. And we can keep comparing them to each other. Even though we don't need to write this data down, what can we now say about which one's growing quickest? Why 3? Right? Whichever one is my black function is growing faster. Red is almost as close. But let's go back and compare what were they? Oh yeah, red was a parabolic, right? Like a quadratic function. Whereas black was an exponential where the X is in the exponent. And that makes sense because we just said exponential functions grow more quickly. Notice that's even true even though we started negative. No, wait, if we look at the negative values, oh, wait, I can keep going negative. My table will continue to let me go negative. Oh, wow. Now, wait a minute. Wait. Keep going negative. Wait, those are the same thing. Yeah, wait a minute. Does it ever go off in negative one? On your notes, please write down the word. I think it's T O T E. I really want to be sure since we're just learning this. I do not want to tell you wrong. Yeah, T-O-T-E. Sorry, I just had to check. Like a tote. Like a tote that you carry things in. Wait, I think that's like a quadratic one. No, sorry. I'm because I'm gonna write a definition. Um, the asymptote is really the line we can never touch. The line we never get to. So there's another fun story about the mathematician who can never actually get where he's going. <laughs> so 
So this mathematician says, I need to travel this distance. Let's say 100 feet. And they travel half each time. So I'm going to start it. by traveling half of that distance. And they get there because they keep going half of the distance that they have left. There's an explosion. They get so it. how would we like write that as a field. function? How would we write that as a function? So if I have a right. hundred feet to go. Like something in one half of it. Wait, does it ask you to asymptote? Does it get closer but never asymptote it, or does it just stop at a point? Asymptote means my graph, like the line of my graph, line, so it's probably a curve. The line of my graph will continue to get closer and closer and closer to the asymptote line, but it will never reach it. So we have a distance of 100 to go, right? We, go 50, then we travel half of it, and we do that X amount of times. Throw this in your graph. Do you want to get rid of the others? Yeah, if you want. Change your table back to ask and auto. Oh no, I accidentally drafted a mole. It's okay if you accidentally draft it. I'll accidentally draft it too. Ooh, there, okay, there's our line. When x is zero. Well, of course, y is 100. I have 100 feet left to go. But after... I move one iteration towards my goal. I'm halfway there. After I move another iteration, well, okay, that makes sense, half of that. But then half of that, 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 half of that. Although our graph will eventually look like we got there, so I'm going to start this at zero. I'm going to go by one step at a time. I'm going to turn this on to auto-auto. Look at how quickly our values just get tiny. We will never, ever get to zero. But we'll get ridiculously close to it. Now, here's the other fun thing. If I bump over to the right, it will give me more information. So when things look like they are the same, quote, unquote, they're not, you just need to bump over and look at the details. It will give you more decimal places when you bump over and highlight on it. It will eventually give you an error where it is too small of a number for the calculator to represent. I just dropped, I, I put in the thousands, just got... Wait, what do you mean too small of a number of the calculator to represent zero and negative numbers? It's too small. The portion that it is trying to represent is not representable with the screen space it has. So imagine 0 .000000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, like 20 or 50 or however many zeros, and then a number. You have to represent that in scientific notation, right? So this, David, this is decimal point 24 zeros, 6, 4, 6, 2, like, you know what I mean? At some point, it's just really small. Now wait, this is wrong, right? So this is where your calculator, like, is dumb, right? That's not true, but it, it, it's, it's so close. It mathematically can no longer differentiate between the value it is and zero. Because guys, this is decimal point 96 zeros. Then one eight two eight oh. seven like Bro. that's ridiculously small. I'm gonna like slow down. So asymptotes lines we get ever closer to but never actually touch. On that, that's all I got for you today. Oh, I like that's that. it. Oh, you know we're at time, right? Like that—that that was the whole class. That was time. Well,